I'm good. How are you? Yeah, I've been looking forward to this for the past couple of weeks. It's a uh, Disney day. <laughs> Yeah, see, I, I get a couple people saying they can only hear, it says her audio is muted. Can everybody hear me okay? Okay, how about now, everybody in the chat? Let me know. Hey, Sherry, welcome to the stream. How are you? Okay, good, good. So you can hear us now as well. Only can hear Mark still, so you're in the middle. Yay, there she is. Okay, oh my goodness, you guys. Seriously, thank you so much for being patient. We have been working on this technical difficulties for quite a while on a past couple streams. Long story short, we want to improve the stream, make it better as a viewer experience for you guys who are watching and making it, you know, a more fun, interactive experience. So thank you for being patient. Thank you for letting me know that you couldn't hear us. We will get right to it and have some fun with these with this stream. So thank you again for being patient. What I was saying before was I want to know more about Mark and hear all about his magical vacation planning. So let's dive right in, Mark. I'm so excited because I know between the two of us, we have a lot of great knowledge that we want to just share with everyone. So thank you again for joining us. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I was born and raised here in uh, Texas, in the Garland area, and I live now out in uh, Roy City, which is just on the east of Rockwell. Uh, for you non-Texas people out there, that's about 35 miles east of Dallas, off of Interstate 30. Um, I've been a, a huge Disney fan since I was able to, to walk and talk, so I've been going <laughs> to Disney since I was uh, about two years old. Um, I've vlogged probably over a dozen or two dozen trips to Disney. It's it's getting so high I can't even count anymore. Um, and uh, let's see, I when I was about seven years old, uh, I got to learn the hard way how uh, Disney security was uh, really good at their job. Uh, I was such a Disney fanatic that I wanted to uh, follow my older brothers to the, uh, the water parks when I wasn't allowed to go with them. So I snuck out, hopped on a Disney bus and made my way to Typhoon Lagoon. Uh, when I got there, we, uh, a Disney security agent with my parents standing there waiting for me. So that was a, a fun experience. Um, one that I'll never forget. Oh my God. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. So that was, that was a lot of, a lot of fun. Um, so besides that, I've been planning Disney vacations for family and friends now for over 15 years. So Mm -hmm. um, I've been the go-to Disney guy when people had questions about their upcoming trip or, you know, what hotel to stay at or what rides I need to do or how do I get, you know, this many fast passes, stuff like that. So right. um, after a while of being a quote-unquote guest, uh, I was actually uh, a customer of Magical Vacation Planner before I became one of their agents. So um, my That's a great way to get started. Yeah, right. My agent at the time was like, you know, you just used me for pretty much just, you know, the, the special deals and to, you know, book your vacation. She's like, you pretty much know everything yourself. She's like, you want to come work for us? And I was like, ah, absolutely. So went through the interview process. Of course, I got hired on. I had, you know, more knowledge than uh, needed for the uh, requirements there. So 
that was back in uh, March of this year, and uh, things have kind of skyrocketed since. So, oh um, a little bit about uh, Magical Vacation Planner for for those that don't know, it's a uh, authorized Disney vacation planner company. It's a meeting that Disney actually trust them to make sure that you have the most magical vacation. Um, they're among the top storefront agencies selling Disney vacations in the U S. So that's a pretty uh, high distinction there. Mm -hmm. And they've been around for over 10 plus years. So it's not like it's a new kid on the block. They've been around for a while and we know what we're doing. Uh, we've got over a thousand agents independent, uh, nationwide and growing by the day. And, um, all, of course, all of our services are 100% uh, complimentary whenever you book through one of our, you know, vendors like Disney or Universal or, you know, one of our other top vendors. Um, so that's one of the, the magical perks, so to speak, is you get free service and you don't pay me extra. That's great. I, I think that is the the biggest misconception about, you know, travel agents and everything in this line of work. People have the idea that it's skewed of, uh, you know, what it was 10 15 years ago that you know you're paying for this and then you're paying for your vacation um you know things have changed and you know you're you're getting a free service and it's uh benefits and knowledge so i think that is something that you know i wasn't even uh i didn't even know that you know before i started going so the fact that you know it's just a wealth of knowledge and hear the share and make sure that people have the tools needed to have a great vacation i think that is so awesome so if anyone in chat has any general questions um, to start their uh, start the questions off, feel free. But we do have a couple things of the most like helpful tips to uh, get the conversation going. But please do just let us know if you're like have a question about what we're talking about or something in general. Feel free uh, to talk to us in chat as well. So what would you say is uh, you know the first thing that you want to uh, say is your biggest tip? Uh, the biggest tip, obviously, is anytime you're going to plan a trip to Disney World, you need to use somebody like myself, or if you're knowledgeable yourself, you need to plan far enough in advance. Mm -hmm. And when I say that, six plus months out, um, sometimes even longer if you're looking for those, you know, like Thanksgiving, Christmas, the busy holiday season. So availability fills up quick. So the earlier that you can book, the better chance you have of getting that room or resort that you want. And then, you know, any specials that come out along the way, of course, you can always get that, you know, applied retroactively, but that's uh, a different conversation. So uh, that's one of the biggest tips, because booking early, using a planner. Uh, another big tip um, is, let me pull up my tips here just a second. Um, sure. Ah, uh, advanced dining reservations. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people don't realize is that, you know, you may book your vacation a year out or six months out. Uh, dining reservations open up 108 days before your reservation. So let's say if you're going in July, you want to start booking your, you know, character breakfasts and stuff in January so that you can make sure you get the right time. So that's another big tip. Booking out your, you know, table reservations and stuff as early as possible as well. Now with your service, do you help book the reservations for us or is it, what point does, how does that work? Walk me through that. Yeah, so it's a good question. So when it comes to our service, we do everything for you from booking your vacation to booking your uh, table reservations, helping you select your fast passes, uh, helping you with things like your touring plan, um, everything. So from A to Z, we take care of it all. We basically just tell you, you show up on vacation, enjoy the magic. We take care of all the rest. That sounds like such a nice stress relief because planning a Disney vacation of any sorts is super stressful. I know that uh, some of my family members went for the first time this year and it, it's an overwhelming experience when you've never been before and you know you have your kids you have to get yourself there how are you going to get there once you get there what are you going to do so to have you know someone hold your hand and, and walk you through I think that's a great a great way to just you know be allowed to enjoy yourself through the process <laughs> before you get there I mean nobody wants to pay that kind of money to go on vacation show up and then spend half the time pulling their hair out figuring out what they're going to do or which line they got to stand in so yeah no i agree um i think that uh having the dining reservations is one thing that um you mentioned but 
we had a little bit of trouble with that previously. So we kept changing the numbers of how many people would go uh, for a character dining. Loved the experience, highly recommend it. Uh, we actually went to the Tusker House in Animal Kingdom. Uh, let me know book. if anyone in chat has been there. It's a great buffet, absolutely delicious. Uh, but I loved it, but it was just a, a confusing and, and difficult experience because those reservations can be difficult to get. So uh, would you be marking and trying to get the reservations as soon as the dates come out? Yeah, so let, you know, like I said, we talked about you know July. You know, If you're going in July, you want to book January. So let's say if you're staying for an entire week, your advanced dining reservation window opens up, you know, that's 180 days out for that entire week. So you can book your all seven days at once, um, all your times, you know, each day. So that helps with that plan that we talked about, um, making sure that you have everything in place so that you don't have to worry about, you know, last minute reservations. So yeah, Tusker House, like you talked about, one of the hardest ones to get. Uh, the reason why is it's a great buffet. Uh, it's a great character buffet. Uh, and not to mention, it's in one of the more popular parks, Animal Kingdom. So a lot of people use that uh, early morning reservation to go get into the park early to get on like Flight of Passage or get over to Pandora as quickly as possible. So that's one of the main reasons a lot of people like that location. For sure. I um, didn't get an early morning reservation when we went to Tusker House. We actually did uh, later in the evening and it became a bit more of a rush because we were uh making sure we had i think it was like four o'clock and then we had to eat and then go to uh the rivers of lights so it was just you know a buffet and especially a character dining experience you want to make sure that you know you have the time to get through so getting the right reservation is is super important so that it works for you and your family so i can see that for sure yeah yeah i mean on a typical character meal you want to allow at least an hour just because, mm -hmm. you know, each character is going to come by your table and they're going to spend anywhere between three to five minutes with your, you know, kids, with your family. So if there's four characters, that's, you know, 20 to 30 minutes and then 30 minutes to eat, of course. So, and you know, an hour is a good enough time. Yeah, definitely agree. Hi, Megan. Hi, Juan. Thanks for joining the stream. How are you guys? Um, yeah, so basically right now we're just talking about some general tips for character dining and things of that sort. Uh, feel free to ask us your questions if you have any as well. So uh, I know we wanted to talk a little bit about rope dropping. Rope dropping is something that I've done a couple times and I know I have um, done it actually for Animal Kingdom. Tell me uh, some of your best tips for that as well. I know, I know, I've done this wrong. <laughs> so rope dropping is like the new new thing, right? Everybody's doing it, right? So, in and, and, and the terms of Disney, you want to be where the crowds are not. So if everybody's rolling to be indoor first thing in the morning, you don't want to be in that crowd. Mm -hmm. uh, I've done it a handful of times, and I'll tell you what, it's it's total craziness. Um, if there wasn't cast members there to hold people back, there would literally be people trampled on a daily basis. So it's it's that crazy. I mean, the ride's great. Don't get me wrong. It's it should be done by everybody at least once if they're going to Disney. Mm -hmm. But there's ways to do flight of passage and where you're not standing in line for four or five hours or waiting just two hours to get into the standby line. So uh, my tip: do not rope drop flight of pen uh, flight of passage at Pandora. Instead. Go to something like Dino Land or Expedition Everest or Kilimanjaro Safaris into the back corners of the park. Start over there because usually you can knock out that whole area probably even before 10 o'clock or two hours after park opening. So to be done with all that and then while everybody else is still standing in line for Pandora, you've knocked out half the park. So you can do things like, you know, the shows. You can, you know, with Animal Kingdom being one of the hottest parks there is, you want to take your time. So obviously you can catch up with those indoor things like Festival of the Lion King or Finding Nemo and then kill time and then do flight of passage. My thing is get in right before the park closes. So if the park closes at nine o'clock, you're in line at 8.55. No matter what it says on the board, you're not gonna wait more than an hour. Yeah, I, I totally agree with this 110% and even more so now because over the summer, I made this mistake. So we rope dropped, we were traveling with family and I had been on Flight of Passage before, but it was their first time. So super excited. 
wanted the rope drop and spend the whole day in the park anyway. And our automatic thought was beeline to the flight of passage line. Well, by the time we got there, the park had already opened, just like Mickey's Magic said, that they let people in 30 minutes before park opening. And this is kind of an interesting thing as well, because a lot of times they'll stage you. So they'll let you into a certain section and then you'll stop. And so you won't actually get in line, but they'll be letting other people move to different sections of the park. So that's an interesting thing as well that, you know, there's not just a, a rampage of people running to get to these lines. So you think OK Park opens at, you know, 8, you know, they're letting people in at 7.30. Um, right. But we, we made that mistake, and I totally agree. Uh, having once lived it and then hearing your explanation, it is, it is a lot easier to do it in the evening. Because who wants to stand in a long line anyway when it's super hot? You know, do it in the evening right at close. Yes, you'll wait 30, 40 minutes if that, but it'll be cooler. <laughs> Not to perk. mention at nighttime, Pandora is so much more awesome to see. I mean, right? even during the day you can see a lot, but nighttime it just comes alive. For sure, I love all the lights. It's it's so incredibly beautiful, I, I love it. Yeah, there is a disadvantage to rope drop Sawyer in the middle for sure. If you have young kiddos, it makes a long day in the park. You know, you gotta prioritize are you going to go early or are you going to stay late? You know, not everyone can be in the park for 16 hours. I myself, that's a long time to be in the park for sure. But, you know, you just got to work what's good for you and your family when you go. And I think that's, you know, the biggest tip of all is, you know, don't kill yourself trying to do it all. Absolutely. I mean, I've been there heck, just my last vacation this past August. I, uh, I outdid myself. I mean, I, we went so hard one day and it was just, it was middle of August. So it's hot to begin with and just got over exhausted. So I had to take a little break for a couple hours, you know? Um, so yeah, that's, you bring up a great point, pace yourself. I mean, if you're going to be there for seven days, you don't have to cram everything in seven days. I mean, I've been over two dozen times, like we talked about, and I still have yet to do everything there is to offer at Disney. So that yeah. just tells you there's a lot to do. I, uh, I totally agree with that statement uh, where I've been, you know, more times than I've really care the count. But also, like, the first time I rode uh, Soarin' this summer, like, I just never got around to riding it. And, you know, that's a big, bigger ride to go see and do. And, yep, wasn't on the top of my priority list, just got yeah. to it, you know, this summer. So don't feel pressured. But... Uh, moving on to fast passes, Mickey's Magic has a good point of making them earlier in the morning and uh, getting out some of those popular popular rides because people cancel. I think that's a great advice as well. I think, Mark, you can agree that uh, fast passes move around all the time. Oh, yeah. I mean, the, the fast pass system constantly changes. Like Mickey's Magic talks about, people are canceling, changing their times all, you know, all throughout the day. So, you know, even if you booked it, 60 days out, you know, you may get to the park late or, you know, one of your little ones had a rough morning and you guys aren't going to make that fast pass window. So yeah, things can, will open up. Mm -hmm. um, I personally don't plan all my fast passes in the morning and here's why. Uh, everybody's different, right? But when I do my rope drops, like we talked about being where the crowds are, mm -hmm. I can go hit a lot of those bigger attractions um, and not have to use a fast pass. So usually I make my fast passes for about two to three hours after park opening. So if it's an eight o'clock opening between 1030 and 11 is my first one, 1130 to 12, 1230 to one around that window. So that I'm on fast pass basically when people are at lunch. So you get a lot more windows at that time. It's just at least what I found. That's a good theory as well. Doing it during parade times and lunch times, dining yeah. times. That's a that's an interesting way to approach it as well. Kind of doing it alternative to to peak. Just like when there's fireworks, everyone runs to, you know, the big yeah. rides. Oh, Mickey says Mickey's magic. She's gotten flight of passes three times in a day. That's that's pretty awesome. Um, wow. I don't think I've got more than one in a day. So that's that's really rocking it. <laughs> <laughs> that's really that is so cool. Uh, three times in one day, riding it is amazing, but fast passing it, my gosh. Yeah, I did one fast pass and one regular standby, and that was the most I could get in one day. So yeah, was, good uh, job. That's pretty awesome. I'm kind of jealous. <laughs> For sure. Hi, Nathan. 
welcome. Ooh, people canceled fast passes. Now that's kind of interesting though, because you know, like you said, the example of, you know, if your kid's sick, um, and people aren't really thinking like, oh, let me go cancel it. Um, if they just let it expire, how does that really work though? Because, um, you know, it's not really going into the inventory. Do they, because people didn't scan it. Do you know how that works? If people just don't show up, do they let more come? So it's kind of a, it, it's a weird situation, right? So the way the fast pass system works is based upon obviously the number of riders that a ride can process in an hour. Um, and they reserve a certain percentage for fast pass and the rest of it, of course, is standby. Mm -hmm. Whenever you have all those reservations within a certain window, if somebody doesn't show up or they cancel it right before, the system isn't going to open up any extra spots, especially if it's right at the end of that window. Right. What's going to wind up happening is it's just going to mean that there's going to be more standby people that are going to get to get on. So maybe an extra two or three people in that hour window versus the, the two or three that failed to come for the fast pass. So that's how it really works. Now, if somebody cancels at the top of the hour, let's say and it's a 105 fast pass and anybody in that one o'clock hour is going to get that chance to grab it. So that's how it works on the, on the backside. Oh, okay. I see. I see. Oh, that's a good point as well. Uh, so we're in the middle. If you're just switching parks completely for sure, and you want to use your fast pass towards something else. So that's a, that's a great, um, that's a great scenario. Hi, Jesse. Welcome yeah, to the stream. Thanks for joining. Uh, Jesse, by the way, let me know if you're going live passes. after this as well. Um, yeah, I think, I think fast passes are, you know, what, makes a vacation great is allowing yourself to to uh book them however you need to to get the favorite rides in and make the whole party happy as well something different though about fast passes that i also learned this summer so a little something about me if anyone is new here and doesn't know anything about me i didn't grow up going to disney um i went to disney like once as a kid and then just started going more as an adult. So a lot of this is still new to me, certain areas and aspects of it. So I didn't know what um, a like switch pass was. Like if you are traveling with different um, kids who are different heights and not tall enough to ride and one is too short to ride but your other kid is, you can swap out and even if you used a fast pass, you can come back, they'll give you a ticket and you can ride with. And I thought this was a really great thing that your whole family is able to ride that favorite ride, even though the one child was too short, you can just come back and do it again. Yeah, that's the other uh, rider switch policy. And it's not available on every ride, but it's available on most attractions and it's really great. It's so like you talked about, if it's say a family of three, a mom, mm -hmm. dad, and a little one, and you know, mom wants to ride Space Mountain, dad wants to ride Space Mountain, but the little one can't, well, mom gets to go stand in line or use a fast pass, either one. She gets to ride, she comes off, and then she basically hands her switch pass to dad, and dad gets to go ride, and he basically gets to go through the fast pass line. So whether they use the fast pass or not, the second person gets to jump through the, the line quicker so that you're not standing outside for five hours, you know, versus two and a half. So, right. Yeah, it's yeah. a really good thing. Okay, so I didn't know that it wasn't on every ride, but, um, you know, it's still a great thing to use. We actually um, used it on um, Everest uh, yes. at Animal Kingdom. So, you know, great thing to use because I didn't even know it existed. Well, I don't have kids yet, so I was traveling with uh, my nieces. So that was maybe the first time. That's why I didn't know about it. But definitely uh, a good thing to know as well. Yeah, and it works for, I mean, it doesn't have to be for kids, right? It could be, let's say you have an older person in your travel family who's just not mobile to get on a ride like that. It's that 11, leaving them out by themselves. I mean, it gives the opportunity for somebody to stay with them while you go do the ride and vice versa. So it's not just for kids. Awesome. So what are some of your uh, best ways to getting into the park? We talked a little bit about, um, you know, if you're going to do rope dropping, but what about some of the entrances and figuring out, you know, your plan of action of getting through the gate? Yeah, so um, a lot of people don't know this, but Epcot is the only park that has two entrances. And what I mean by that is you have the front entrance where the monorail drops off and the buses and everybody goes through security, and that's the main entrance. But then there's a back door at the International Gateway. So that's located right in between France and Canada. 
and it actually connects the uh, Epcot Resort Hotel. So the boardwalk, the um, Yacht and Beach, Swan and Dolphin, that whole area right there. And you can just walk from those hotels to get into the back Epcot. Now, this is really great for rope drop because it puts you the closest to Soren. And it's also, it's about the same distance to test track compared to the front gates, but there's literally nobody that goes to those back entrances. So security, five seconds to go through back check. Uh, turnstiles, never anybody in line. So, I mean, you literally, a park opening, you could walk through, be into the park and on storm before the crowds even make it through the, the pavilion. I love that. That is such a great tip um, because, you know, it is a bit of a walk for sure. Welcome to everyone who just joined Bell Southern Disney Adventures. Um, our Disney Adventures and Disney World Adventures. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for joining, guys. Yeah, I think entering into... Uh, different ways thinking about what not the masses are doing is a great way to have a blast for sure um so i have another question that just popped in i know we're jumping around a little bit so mark if i already have a vacation planned and you know say i bought my ticket through a different third party or i just bought my tickets through their uh, Disney World website or however else I may have booked a trip, but I decide that, you know what, there are some perks to uh, booking with you. What would be, uh, can I switch? So yeah, it's a great question. So if you're booking just tickets, so let's say you went online and you booked a five day park offer and you're not staying on site. When it comes to tickets, there's not much I can do after you've already booked them because they're not refundable, non-transferable. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to a vacation package, let's say you booked a ticket and hotel and dining plan or just ticket and hotel, as long as it's within 30 days and you have not paid the full balance, so you just put down your deposit of 200 bucks, we can transfer your reservation to us and you still get all the perks and benefits. So inside of 30 days, you're gold. Outside of that 30 days, unfortunately, we can't help you. However, um, I have had people do this. If you're outside the 30 days, but you're still within your cancellation window, mm -hmm. you can actually cancel your package, get your $200 deposit back, no questions asked, and then we rebook it the same day. So you literally wouldn't lose any type of specials, you wouldn't lose any availability, and it would all just be the same. Nice, that's great. I, I think uh, you know maximizing your benefits for uh, a vacation like this that can be you know they dubbed the most expensive day ever have you seen those t-shirts uh you know it's it's like you gotta plan smart and you gotta use the things to your benefit absolutely i mean like we talked about you know this kind of money that you spend on a vacation you need to have somebody in your corner like me that's an expert so somebody you can call text email even while you're on your trip. So, I mean, I have clients who call me all the time. They've got a question or they need help with a reservation. I'm just a phone call or a text away. Yeah, that's so cool. That's great. So let's see here. Um, what is what is your favorite park? And then we can talk a little bit about, you know, some tips from, from that. Uh, my favorite park, let's see. I actually have, you know, a favorite in every one of them, but I'll say right now my, my most favorite is Animal Kingdom. Nice. And mainly because of uh, Pandora. Um, not only just because of Pandora, I just like Animal Kingdom because it's such a, an awesome park. So I like all the animals and the nature and the different shows and cultures that they have to offer there. It's just, it's unlike all the other three parks combined. And so what would be your best uh, tips for Animal Kingdom besides uh, Pandora that we just talked about? Is there... Well, another must do is mm -hmm. going to be uh, Rivers of Light. And a tip for that is get a, uh, a Tusker House dining reservation. Yes. They have uh, the Rivers of Light dining package. So this works for the character breakfast as well as the evening dinners. So if you get the dining package, um, especially if you're on a dining plan, this is one table service credit, you get priority seating. It's basically just like a fast pass for Rivers of Light. We did that this past August. That's awesome. And we were literally front row. Couldn't have been any better seats. Oh man, I am right there with you on agreeing so good with that. Um, if anyone doesn't know where the priority seating is and you're curious, it is great seats. I actually have a uh, link of the full show of uh, River of Lights on my channel and you can see the seating. It is the best seating in the house uh, when you do that Tusker House reservation. So I uh, highly encourage that I think 
that is so fun. But Rivers of Light is great. I love in the beginning when they walk around and especially in that uh, advanced like VIP seating, they walk around and, and come hang out with you, the characters, and it's just a great experience and a great way to uh, amp you up for the show. So that's a lot of fun. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about because I was in that same spot and yeah. I, I did a long video on Facebook when we were there in August and they came right up to my camera as I was filming and it was just, it was totally magical. So Yeah, was, the same. I was vlogging and, you know, they just kind of like look into the camera and just have fun with it. So, um, you know, if you're vlogging or on your camera or not, they're just there to entertain you and they're awesome. Yeah, it was a truly a mesmerizing show. I mean, I could watch that probably five times in a row and still probably see something I didn't see before. It's just, there's so much going on. Yeah. Um, so my favorite park is Magic Kingdom. Do you have anything in particular about that park that sticks out that you wanted to share? Um, as far as tip-wise for Magic Kingdom, let's see. Well, I mean, obviously it's the most popular park. Everybody goes there, right? So, I mean, yeah. everybody has to go there. That's like the first place you go. Yeah. Um, it's like you've arrived at Disney once you go to the Magic Kingdom. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, no trips complete unless you get a picture in front of Cinderella's castle. So, um, you know, there's so many good tips for Magic Kingdom. I mean, I could, we could talk for hours just on that alone. True. But, um, if you've seen the parades, I would say, you know, if you've seen it once, they're the same each and every time, uh, unless you have kids that just want to see it. That's the best time to ride any of the popular rides is during the parades and during the fireworks show, uh, Space Mountain, Big Thunder, uh, Splash Mountain, um seven doors mind drain um that's one of my personal favorites um that's also great to do during um happily ever after nice yes with the um the fireworks um mind train is a great one for sure i love um i love the parades i'm a sucker for them so i have a hard time skipping out on them just because i love the singing and dancing with it uh, because I want to get right in there and, and and sing and dance along. But, you know, if you can skip it, yeah, I see that's a, a great a great thing to do. So what about um, Hollywood Studios? I know you have an idea about um, the Jedi shows. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so this is great for kids. Um, obviously, they go up to, I think it's 12 or 13 is a cutoff for age, but uh, kids that want to participate in the Jedi Trials of the Temple, which is a basically a stage show where they get to fight against Darth Vader and other uh, villains of the, the Empire. Um, the best thing to do is make a morning uh, advanced dining reservation for a character breakfast at Hollywood and Vine. Um, that's a Disney Junior character breakfast, so they got a lot of great uh, you know characters for like Sophia the First, Handy Manny, uh, Goofy's there in his racing gear, so and Minnie's there too. Um, but you, before you come into the park office for your dining reservation, you get in before everybody else. So yes, great yes. place to time to take pictures. Then you also get to make a quick beeline over to the Trials of the Temple, which is right next to uh, Indiana Jones, and you sign your kid up. I mean, there's nobody there, so you literally get any spot that you want. So if you want breakfast at 8.30 and you want Trials of the Jedi Temple at 9.30, you're done before 10 o'clock with you know, two of the most popular things in the park. So that's another great way to save some time. Because those I, spots fill up quick. Yeah, I think uh, having a breakfast reservation and getting in before the park opens is that's just like brilliant. You know, you you be able you're able to get through. I just I love that idea. I haven't done a breakfast reservation yet, but the fact that you know if you can get up that early um, and hit, get to the parks that early, hit the ground running, I think that's a fabulous idea. It does take a little dedication. I mean, don't get me wrong. Um, you know, if you've got an eight o'clock reservation at, you know, Hollywood Studios, you got to be on the bus by no later than seven o'clock, you know, so it means getting up at six, six fifteen. And if you got kiddos, maybe even earlier. So yeah, on a vacation, that's pretty early. It is, it is. But if you have kiddos that uh, wake up early, then I can see that working in your favor. Yeah. I mean, every kid wants to wake up early for Disney. Don't get me wrong. For sure. Definitely. Um... Let's see here. Well, while we're still talking about uh, Hollywood Studios, yeah. um, let's talk about Slippy Dog. So Perfect. that's another popular uh, rope drop. Um, it's one of the most popular attractions in Hollywood Studios, obviously, because, you know, Toy Story Land and all. But rope dropping, just like Pandora, sometimes it's hit or miss um, with Slinky Dog. So depending on, you know, what the crowd levels are like, it could be an hour at rope drop. It could be two hours for Slinky Dog. It just depends 
um, you know, how fast that line's moving. I know back in August when we were there, it, it broke down a lot in the morning or had problems starting up. Oh, no, so, did it? Yeah, so, I mean, even when we broke the drop, we still stood in line for an hour and a half at some time. So, you know, like I said, it's hit or miss. I like to do same thing with Pandora. I like to do Slinky Dog at night, um, right before park closing or during the Star Wars or Fantasmic shows because, again, a lot of people are doing that. Not to mention, you know, Toy Story Land is more geared towards kids, so most kids are in bed by 8, 9 o'clock at night. So another great tip. For sure. No, I like that. Um, hi, Kyle. Welcome. Uh, Kyle says to rope drop Slinky Dog, and you got on Slinky Dog and Alien Saucers by 9.08, and you got there an hour yes, early. works. That's great. That's a great, um, you know, definitely whatever works for you. That's knocking out two big rides there for sure. I think, uh, you know, either way, if you can get lucky and get it done, I think that's great. Uh, hi Caesar, welcome. Thanks for joining. Uh, Slinky Dog was only 35 minutes the last week of November. Wow. That's uh, that's pretty low. I mean, considering it's still a very new ride, that's wow. that's a low wait time. That is very low. That's I'm like shocked by that. I was there opening day, and oh my gosh, we waited so long. <laughs> I think it so, was like five hours just to get into the Toy Story Land on opening day. Yeah, well, once we got in, you know, we were there right when it opened. And once we got in, we didn't want to leave because that's when it was a five-hour wait. You, They were waiting for people to leave before they would let more in. It was it was mayhem, but it was a lot of fun. But 35 minutes, whew, sign me up right now. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, right. Oh, yes. Thank you, Jesse. Yeah, show me guys you're having some fun and hit the like button. I appreciate that. It helps the stream stay strong. Um, yeah, so if you guys also have any questions, feel free to uh, ask us your questions or, you know, comment on what your favorite tip is as well. We're just all about sharing the knowledge of uh, Walt Disney World and how, you know, we can pass along uh, tips and tricks from from us. So I got a question for you, Alana. How many times have you been to Disney? Um, Disney World. Well, this summer we became annual pass holders. So mm -hmm. just this year I have been, ooh, gosh, like, well, not the whole summer, but like up until annual pass holders to now, like eight times, I think. Raphael, if you're in chat, can you confirm or deny? <laughs> um, <laughs> we've gone enough to make sure that we're getting our money's worth out of our annual passes. So uh, with that, you know, just got to, it's an investment and, you know, we love going. So definitely, you know, trying out the annual pass. We love it so much. We'll make sure that, you know, it to get our money's worth and then we'll go forward next year as well and and try for it again so you know got to see the breakdown of you know what we can how how, how much it'll save us yeah the annual pass is great i mean if you can go more than twice in a year and any average from four to six days at a time you pay for this, the annual pass just alone because you know if you're buying five day park hoppers you know two times in one year, that's enough for an annual pass pretty much. So yeah, um, I'm probably going to do the annual pass uh, after Star Wars opens up because I'm going to be addicted. Um, and I will probably have a temporary residence in Orlando 2020. <laughs> so <laughs> nice. I will be there as often as I can <laughs> yeah. to get as much coverage as possible. So I'm really looking forward to that. And didn't you mention uh, previously that you're actually uh, a long-term goal is to relocate to Orlando? I think a lot of uh, people in chat here also share that uh, admiration of moving moving down there as well. Well, yeah, of course. I mean, who, who doesn't want to be as close to the magic as possible, right? So, yeah. Uh, and then, of course, being in my profession, the closer I could be to Disney, the more times I get to experience it, the more times I get to share my expertise with the world. So... Um, yeah, that's my, my long-term goal within the next eight to 10 years is to uh, move out to Florida and post to the Orlando area, Orlando area and and uh, start making the real magic happen locally, so. Yeah. Oh, no, I love that. I We tantalize with the idea as well. Um, I know that 
our Disney Adventures was joking in a previous stream that uh, they're gonna just gonna crash at everyone's houses and we all can just get a crash pad and you know I I'm I'm all about that idea so uh, if you guys are still in here, I approve. <laughs> but um, considering when we go, we go very budget friendly so we can maximize um, our stays and keep coming back. So uh, for us, we have never stayed on property before. So I'd love to hear, uh, you know, what's staying on property like? What are the benefits of that? What am I missing out on? Oh, man, you're missing out on so much. So I know. Let's, let's start with the most uh, biggest number one thing, and that is you get 60 days before everybody else to book your fast passes. I mean, how cool is that? Yeah. I mean, you get a head start on flight of passage before anybody else, even annual pass holders. So, because they only get 30 days if they're not staying on property. So, like a, uh, another big thing going on property is complimentary transportation from Orlando International. No better way to arrive in style to your hotel than in a Disney motor coach driven by a Disney driver and they take care of your luggages from the moment you get off the plane. It goes straight to your hotel room. You don't have to go by baggage check, baggage claim. You just go straight to the magic and get straight to Disney. So that's a big perk. And that's totally free as long as you're, you know, staying on property. So that's a huge perk. The average transfer, I think, for four people from Orlando to or Disney, it's over a hundred bucks. So that's a huge value. Round trip, that's over two hundred bucks. That pays for your deposit right then and there. Definitely. Uh, the yeah. amount of Ubers we spend, money on Ubers, it uh, adds up for sure. And if you're right there, that I, I know what you're talking about with those transfers. That's that's a that's a big help. Yep. Another thing, uh, this is also huge, extra magic hours. So you get to get into the park or you get to stay later in the park than everybody else. And what I mean by that is only hotel guests staying on property uh, on select days. Each park is different. We'll either open up one hour before or we'll stay open two hours later than regular park closing. So if you are staying on property, you get to go get in line for flight of passage an hour before everybody else. So you get an hour leg up. And the way they do this is they basically scan your magic band. So they know when you get into the park, if it's before it opens up, they're not letting you through the turnstiles unless you for sure staying on property. Same thing with after hours. If it's after park closing, unless your magic band says you're staying on property, sorry, you got to walk out the gates. Yeah. Um, well, it looks like welcome Texas takes. I took a little poll. So Texas uh, excuse me, Texas takes votes for off property. Caesar votes for on, um, shades of green, best value at Disney. You know, so I think people are kind of, uh, 50, 50 in the middle there with it, but it's kind of one of those things that once I experience it, Oh, I'm never going to want to stay off property again. <laughs> I mean, even the value resorts, right? So the all-stars, the pop century, art of animation, you know, the lower tiers of Disney's hotels have great accommodations. So, I mean, even for adults, right? One of my favorites is pop century to stay at mm -hmm. um, just because I like the theming. I like the layout of the hotel. I like that it's right next to art of animation. And then not to mention, it's going to be right there where the Skyliner is going to be uh, dropping off and picking up. So that's going to be another big plus. And, you know, when you spend 16 hours in the park like my, like me, you know, you just want a place to sleep and their their beds are just as comfortable there as they were at the Contemporary, so. Yeah. I think, um, you know, having your money stretch with the complimentary shuttles and having complimentary uh, magic bands, that is, uh, you know, a money saver right there that, you know, you look at this you price tag and you might get sticker shock, but when you break it down, you know, you are saving long term over that. And um, magic bands are a funny thing that people always want to go buy the the enhancements and, you know, specific ones. But if you have a free one, you know, save that money and and spend it on something else. If, uh, you know, you want to stretch your stretch your dollars. Yeah, for sure. I mean, because a magic band goes for at minimum 25 bucks plus tax. So, I mean, family of four, there's another hundred bucks, right? So free magic bands, you can customize your own magic bands, Etsy, uh, Pinterest, they got all kinds of stuff online where people have blinged out their magic bands and printed them on themselves. So yeah, you know, it's just another perk. Um, That's a fun DIY project for sure. <laughs> yeah. I know I, I see them all the time. I mean, even in the parks. Um, the one thing that I like is the, uh, I have an Apple watch. So they have a little 
like a slider that goes over your magic band mm -hmm. so that you can, uh, or over your watch, so you can wear your magic band on your Apple watch instead of having to wear, you know, two bands. Yeah, no, I love that. I, um, I think they need to make those for Fitbit as well. You know, I don't know if the uh, the Apple Watch one would fit, but I'm sure somebody's either already started or uh, is planning on doing it because, yeah, Fitbits are just as popular as Apple Watches. Yeah. Especially in the parks. I don't <laughs> know. Correct me if I'm wrong. wrong. I don't, anyone in chat, if you know as well, uh, as far as I know, they haven't come out with one yet, but I think that would be a great, a great thing. I know Raphael always loves to wear his Fitbit in the park because it, uh, tracks your steps and we can say oh my gosh you know beat our last score of the last time we were in the park of oh today it's 30,000 steps you know <laughs> so uh definitely a, a lot of wrist jewelry with that by the way welcome Raphael thanks for joining uh Mark and I wanted to confirm um if you knew the correct number of how many times we've been since we got the um annual pass and I said at least like eight. I wasn't really sure, but it sounds about right. I know we've at least broken even, but let me know if you concur. Um, he said <laughs> not enough times. Well, he's always ready for the next one. We we have our bags packed. We're ready to go. <laughs> I can have a Disney bag ready in 30 minutes. I'm ready to go. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I love it. Um Oh, goodness. Um, Jesse, yes, thank you for uh, getting on him about that. I appreciate that. So, guys, uh, let us know if you have any questions as well. Uh, we have a little bit more time left, but don't want to uh, exclude any of your questions. If you have something that you would like to share, uh, feel free to chime in as well. So what else would um, you guys like to hear about? Um, or what would you like to talk about, Mark? Dining plans or touring plans? If anyone has a preference. Yeah, let's talk about a few of those real quick. Well, we've got a few minutes left. Um, okay. Just real quickly, fast packs, fast passes. Um, if you guys want to learn more about how you can get more fast passes, I've got a playlist already created on my channel uh, with two videos that uh, I've pulled up. And it tells you everything you need to know about getting the most out of your fast passes. So you can definitely check that out and be worth your wait. Um, because we could spend the way an hour just talking about that. Yeah. Uh, Texas Takes says, uh, master the My Disney app. Yes, that's a huge tip. So if you're going to Disney, whether you're staying on property or not, the My Disney Experience app is a must. You have to have that. I mean, it's like, it literally is your, your pocket guidebook. It's your Disney tour agent, travel agent in your pocket. Everything from attraction times to character meet and greets, show times, um, everything's in there. Bathrooms, you know, where's the nearest restroom at, right? If you need an ATM or if you need to get to the first aid, all that's in there. You don't have to carry around a park map. It's all digital. For and sure. And then not to mention the uh, new thing that came out this past summer is the Disney Parks Play app. And if you haven't heard of that or used it, it is an interactive app that you can do things in the park on your smartphone. So... Obviously, you've been in lines many times and see those people playing like the the heads up game, like where they you know have to guess something and they flip their phone and almost like charades, right? Well, mm -hmm. Disney saw that opportunity to create an app where people can play games while waiting in line, and then not only do that, but they earn badges and it's interactive. Um, for example, at Epcot, they used to have a game where you would use a cell phone to play. I think it was like. Um, uh, uh, Party the Platypus or something like that. Um, some Disney show. I forgot what the name of it is. But you would send like these little text SMS codes and you would do these special missions around World Showcase. Well, now it's all done through the app and it triggers certain things in parts of World Showcase that go off. Like an ant, you know, a, a statue may move or a picture may change colors or something like that. So it's really cool. So yeah, the My Disney app and the Play app, two things you need to have. Um, touring plans. A lot of people don't know what these are and they hear about it all the time. And it's basically, it's what I do. So we map out what rides you want to hit in say the magic kingdom and in what order. And then we take, you know, what time you want to have lunch, what time you want to get to the park. And we kind of work that all into an optimized plan so that you're going to be like we talked about earlier, where the people and the crowds are. So 
if you want to do Space Mountain and you want to do Splash Mountain and you want to do Seven Dwarves, that's not going to be at the top of your touring plan. It's maybe one of them's for rope drop, you know, one of them in the afternoon, one in the evening. But we give you that optimized route, so to speak, so you can maximize your, your time in the park and not have to stand in line a lot. Yeah, for sure. No, I think that is awesome uh, advice. By the way, guys, uh, the link that I just dropped in the chat is uh, his channel. So make sure you go check that as well. So you can see those playlists that he's talking about for uh, a bunch of more knowledge, um, you know, after the fact to dive in. Because like you said, we could be here all day. I love um, the tip of the the play app. I haven't used this really myself, but the fact that you can do something to uh, keep your mind occupied and everyone else in line occupied as well of using the app to play a game while you're waiting in a long line. I think that's fantastic as long as it's working well. And also uh, Texas Takes was talking about using um the the app and knowing it ahead of time that kind of just makes it easier when you know you're looking for the bathroom and, and figuring out like how to use the app because it is a little bit different of an interface and being able to pull up things fast and how to change your fast passes i think taking a look at it beforehand is, is a great help <laughs> uh texas tech also says online ordering the mobile ordering process yes a, oh my god i use that probably four or five times and I never had to stay in a line once. It was great. Yeah. It was great. Uh, when it's working and it's up, use it. I think uh, more people uh, should definitely use it. I I swear by it. I definitely have used it before and I think it's a great thing. Uh, by the way, I know there's a lot of great channels in here as well. So feel free to uh, talk a little bit about um, if you're a creator, put creator in the text. I know that uh, a lot of people are new to Mark's channel as well. And feel free to uh, let everyone else know because there are some new people in here. So we can all uh, be friends and share our Disney knowledge because we have a lot in common here. So a uh, great welcoming open community here. So feel free to check each other's channel out. And uh, let's see, how much more time left do we have here, Mark? It says we got a few minutes, but uh, Sawyer brings up a good point. Star Wars Land? Question mark? Question mark? I mean, I'd rather talk about that than, than the dining plan. So let's let's talk about Star Wars Land. All so, right, I I'm dying. Oh, here we go. <laughs> if you haven't been to Disney, uh, and I'm talking to everybody on the channel here, if you haven't been to Disney recently, they are creating both in Disneyland and Disney World a 14 acre star wars nerds dream so 14 acres of star wars i mean everything from the the, uh, the planet itself the rock formations the interactivity the the aliens that are going to be roaming around the droids i mean if you wanted to ever live in a star wars movie this is going to be your opportunity so it's going to be off the chain like i thought pandora was awesome this is going to be pandora to the 10th level so i cannot wait um, the last time I was there in August, I got to see, you know, from Slinky Dog into Galaxy's Edge. Mm -hmm. It is so massive. It is so huge. And I can't wait to be there next year. Fingers crossed here for opening day, but if not, 20 for sure. For sure. I can't wait either. I know Jesse uh, Robert Garza is a huge Star Wars fan. I think all of us are just you know, chomping at the bit for every bit of information that's new that comes out. Um, I would love to be there for opening day as well, just like so many of us. It's going to be insane. Yeah, I really don't know if Disney is truly anticipating the, the, the floodgates that they're about to unleash on themselves. I mean, <laughs> they, are, they are improving everything around the parks from transportation to making more roadways and everything else, but I just truly don't think they know what they get themselves into. <laughs> I know. Think about, uh, I think that'll be the first time that uh, Pandora will really be uh, a uh, short line. <laughs> that's, that's, I really am looking forward to that, but I don't know. Um, Cause that's going to be like the balancer, right? So you're going to have that. You're going to have Slinky Dog Dash. You're going to have Seven Doors Mind Drain. They've got all these other good attractions that are going to have to balance out the, the weight of Star Wars land. So, and then Mickey's one, Runaway Railway, that one's coming this uh, coming fall. So, yeah, I can't wait. Uh, and then Star Wars Hotel. I mean, they've already got my money. Just just open my wallet. Just take it. <laughs> just take it. Sign your paychecks over now. <laughs> 
I yeah, I, uh, Disney. I, I don't even get my money. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that's, that's absolutely fantastic. I, like I've said with never staying on property before, can you imagine if my first time I stayed on property, I stayed at Star Wars Hotel? That's setting the bar really high. <laughs> really, really high. I mean, there'd be no point in going anywhere else after that. I, I agree. I think um, that would definitely be not a good idea. But uh, I, I, I can't wait. I hope, I hope I can afford it at some point in my life because I gotta check it out. It's definitely gonna be an amazing hotel. Jesse says he's staying at the Star Wars Hotel. Well, Jesse, I'm bunking with you because I need to see it too. (laughs) Yeah, I wonder how long the wait for the the sign-up for Star Wars Hotel is going to be. I mean, we're talking, I mean, most cruise lines, you know, have a six-month waiting period. This is going to be years out. So I think it's going to be uh, definitely interesting. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, Jesse, uh, I have seen the quote-unquote blueprints for the new hotel. Um, It looks really cool. Um, it's going to be kind of like a cruise ship layout almost as far as the, the rooms from what I've seen, mm-hmm. but the, um, the resort itself is going to be really cool. I can't wait to see more. I haven't seen the blueprints, but, um, you know, I look forward to, to seeing it. So is there anything else as we wrap up here that, uh, we may have forgot that you want to throw out there as well that you can think of? Um... I mean, I, I guess if you want to come follow me on my channel, I don't have any stuff that I'm creating just yet, but that's going to start hopefully in the new year. I'm going to be putting out like some short tips, videos and stuff like that. Perfect. Um, and of course, if anybody wants uh, help planning their vacation, you know, I'm always a phone call, chat, email, whatever way. Um, I think you've got my contact info down in the description. And of course you can find me on Instagram or on Facebook. Yes. So, um, Let's throw your Instagram handle in as well because I don't have that one in the uh, chat box or the description box, but I can add that for sure. Um, But I know um, Jesse Robert Garza, are you still going live tonight to celebrate your 100th video of your weight loss journey? Let us know if we need to... uh, I'll jump over there as well. Oh, perfect. There you got go. the link faster than I did. Okay. That was, that was <laughs> great. Know, I had to type it manually too. <laughs> <laughs> I went to Instagram to grab it. You're good. Awesome. Love it. Yeah. So I've had a lot of fun chatting. I think that there's uh, so much more uh, to cover and so many topics, you know, we didn't even hit uh, really the iceberg here of all the knowledge. I think, you know, we can have you back on and talk about, you know, cruising, a whole other aspect of uh, Disney and vacations as well. So, you know, if you're up for it, I'd love to ha- have you back and talk more about it. And, you know, I'm having a blast uh, talking shop here. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank you again for having me. And uh, I would love to talk about cruising. We can maybe get, schedule something for after the new year. Perfect. Well, guys, if you don't have anything else, uh, you know, planned for uh, a vacation and you want to get one started, make sure you reach out to Mark. He can answer all of your questions and help you along the way. It definitely can be an overwhelming thing and that's not what his goal is. He's here to relieve your stress and you get a lot of perks uh, for booking with him and you, and it's a free service. So, you know, not a sales pitch here, just trying to help everyone have a great vacation and enjoy themselves. So it's a win-win. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I just want to share my love with everybody else. I mean, that's, that's really my goal. And if you don't have to pay anything for that, yeah, a win-win is exactly. For sure. I love it. Well, uh, I think that'll wrap it up. Hi, Willie. Thanks so much for joining. I'm sorry. We're catching you at the end here, but, um, yeah, I, I can't wait to have you back on the channel. And if you have questions that you think of later on, feel free to hit uh, Mark up on his socials in the link in the description box below or ask me myself as well. Um, oh, before I go, I want to show one quick thing here. I have tomorrow my live stream giveaway. 
So my giveaway is going to be uh, a live giveaway and I have the items right here that I'm going to show you guys really quick. Okay. So I know some of you guys have seen these before, but I want to show you because the giveaway is tomorrow and I have the link also in the description box below for you to enter if you haven't already. So being in the Disney spirit here, our Disney uh, countdown to the holidays vlogmas giveaway starts with some Disney pins that I'm going to be giving away. So we have that as our first giveaway. There's three giveaways and we have some mickey clips to keep your chips fresh in the pantry here so you can have a mickey touch every time your kitchen or in your kitchen <clears throat> and we also have some holiday uh, christmas colored ears as well so you can be festive when you open up your christmas presents and also i have a fourth giveaway i always give away three items but i have a fourth item the goal is to get uh, the channel to 500 subscribers uh, by the end of the giveaway. And currently, as it stands right now, I will pull it up to give it a live number. Currently at 478, so we're a bit away, but anything's possible with a little bit of pixie dust here. So I'm not gonna say uh, that this isn't happening. This could totally well be yours. You could take this home tomorrow in the live stream. So these other um, items that I showed you, those three items are going a, a, a giveaway in the link, but in the live chat, this is who someone's gonna get this. This is a signed piece of art by Larry Dotson. He signed it himself here and I just love to share it with you all because it is the castle overlay of the holidays. It's absolutely gorgeous and I can't wait to have one go home to you guys. I have one as well. I loved it so much that I thought I had to share it with you guys. So that's the goal for 500 subscribers for it to go home with you guys for the December giveaway. And we'll cross our fingers that that uh, happens and you can have it as a nice early Christmas present. So those are the items. I hope you guys uh, check out that link so you can join and join me for tomorrow's stream for that live giveaway. I also have a giveaway that I re received. I won from Disneyland Eric. If you haven't checked him out, check him out as well. Uh, an awesome Disneyland vlogger. I received a present, so I'll do a little un unboxing opening of that as well. So I think that covers a little bit of the housekeeping. Thank you so much for uh, hanging in there through that. I feel like that was a little long-winded, but a lot of exciting things on my channel, on your channel coming up in the new year as well with uh, producing those tips and tricks and everyone as well, uh, feel free to let us know what you have going on as well so we can follow along on your journey as well. I think there's so much knowledge to share and I can't wait to to learn it all and you know help everyone grow and become successful in what they're doing. Woo! <laughs> Yeah, awesome. Uh, one last thing here. Yes, so we're. I'm gonna head over. You all are welcome to head over as well to Jesse Robert Garza's stream. We're gonna uh, jump over to that as well and help celebrate his weight loss and his hundredth video. So thank you so much, guys, for watching. Appreciate it. We'll talk to you real soon. Okay. Have a good night. Take care. Bye, guys. Have a good night.